I was a freshman in high school when I started cutting. On the surface, I looked like I had it all together. I was a solid A and B student. I was involved in sports, theater, choir. I was active in my church. I had a lot of friends. I also struggled with anxiety and depression. But I didn't have a name for that yet. I just knew there was this pain in my heart and in my head that I didn't know how to heal. To this day, I really can't tell you how the idea of self-harm first occurred to me. But I can tell you this. I did not want to die. I was fighting like hell to stay alive. The pain wasn't something I enjoyed, but it was something I could control when everything else was out of control. Something I understood when nothing else in life made sense. And so whenever fear or stress or anger or sadness threatened to overwhelm me, I turned to self-harm. And it worked, in a sense. I could temporarily distract myself from whatever was overwhelming me, but it didn't fix anything. And the more I turned to self-harm, the more I needed it because our brains can become dependent on the dopamine our body produces when we're hurt. So if I had a big test coming up, I'd cut. If I was arguing with my parents, I'd cut. That person that I liked didn't like me back, I'd cut. It wasn't until I was a sophomore in college that I first sought help. Now, I was raised in the church. I was a religion major who wanted to be a pastor. I was working in a church. So I figured I should talk to my pastor. And I shared with him the hurt and the shame and the fear that I'd been carrying for all these years. And with four words, he broke me. You're going to hell. Four words. But they confirmed everything I'd ever been afraid of. I was broken, and there was no hope of fixing me. So I walked away from the church, and I dropped out of school. I moved back home, and I sank into a deep depression. And I cut. For the next two years, I tried to get my life back in order. I went back to school, I found a new church. I was playing guitar in their praise band. And a part of me really wanted to join this church, but I was scared. I didn't think they'd want me if they knew just how broken I really was. Eventually, I sat down with Pastor Carla. And for the second time, I shared this story and I was terrified what she was going to say when I finished. And Pastor Carla listened, and then she also said four words. There's grace for that. There's grace for that. 
Y'all, those words changed my life. After hearing those words, I started to share my story with others. I started doing research. I started giving talks. I learned how common self-harm is as a coping mechanism. How many people just like me had embraced a self-destructive behavior in the desperate hope of saving their lives? The more I learned, the more I shared, the more I taught, the more I found healing in the grace that found me. It didn't happen all at once. Recovery is a process. But having my brokenness met by grace made recovery a possibility. And this year, on Easter morning, I celebrated 10 years safe from self-harm. Y'all, I gotta tell you, these 10 years have had the very best and the very worst days of my life so far. And I am not here tonight to testify to my strength or my willpower, but instead to tell you that even 10 years in recovery, I'm every bit as broken as that freshman in high school. And there's grace for that. Like St. Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and God's grace toward me has not been in vain. It's only because I've experienced grace that I'm able to stand here and share grace with others. So listen up, adult leaders. You will have young people come to you and share things with you that challenge you. Things that you don't understand, things that scare you. There's grace for that. You don't have to save your kids. Jesus already did. So instead of trying to save them, thank them for their trust. Ask them about their experience. Remind them of the grace that holds them and accompany them to find the resources they need for recovery. The rest of y'all, I want you to hear this. We are all recovering from something. Now maybe like me, it's self-harm. Maybe it's something else. But from time to time, every single one of us feels broken. And there's grace for that. because our God is in the business of bringing beauty out of broken things and broken people. Now, now I hope that before tonight, someone has modeled grace for you and someone has extended grace to you, but I know that some of y'all have been rejected. I know that some of y'all have hidden your hurt. 
for fear of what others might say. And if that's you tonight in this crowd, I'm encouraging you to find someone you trust and tell them your story. A pastor, a youth leader, a doctor, a teacher, maybe even your parents. If that doesn't feel safe, ask a friend to go with you. Because I know that it's a risk to share your story. But I also know that it's a risk that is so worth taking. Whatever it is you're carrying tonight, I can promise you this. There's grace for that. By the grace of God, you are what you are, beloved child of God. And God's grace toward you has not and will not be in vain because grace, grace changes everything.